Hi there. My name is Russ Ragsdale. I'm with That's Live TV. I'm here today with Nick Miller. Hello. Nick is, well, he's not too fresh off the boat. He is from Australia, making Nashville his home now. And I have him over here at the studio today because he has got such an interesting story to tell. Just an absolute dream come true. And I know this story is going to be of interest to everybody all over the place here. And I would just like to start by welcoming you to the show, Nick. Thank you, Russ. So good to see you again. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you still have got your accent now. Is, is there a, any Southern uh, Australian accent you, going you, yet? Or is you it... know what? When I, when I speak to my Australian friends at home, they ask me why I have an American accent. <laughs> so I think, you know, I still have my Australian accent, but there's a little bit of a, uh, from living here, you know, for the last six years, there's a little bit of an inflection coming in. So I'm kind of developing this, <laughs> this little bit of a hybrid between Australian and a Southern drawl. So, uh, you know, anyway, you so at, it's, at, you know, different points while we're talking today, I'm, I'm going to sound really Australian and sometimes I'm going to sound Southern. So, uh, <laughs> so y'all yeah. and you say y'all? I've started saying y'all. Uh oh, yeah. uh oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's, uh, that's when I really knew I was like, wow, this, this country and this, this, you know, this beautiful. You brought your dog. Well, hello, Ringo. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's a fan of mine. And, uh, you know, he seems to like hearing me play guitar. So, he likes um, guitars. He likes seems. to bark at me, too, but when I play guitar, he stops. So, yeah, well, yeah. He's, he's, he's ready for you to pick up a guitar, and I guess you're going to yeah. do that later for us and play That's some songs right. for you. Yeah, for yeah. Us. Uh, uh, two... you've, you've been making records. You've got a band uh, that you've been involved with for a number of years, Long Reef. And That's right, yeah. You make some solo records, and mm -hmm. your style is just like all over the map, doing all kinds of things. Yeah, well, I think uh, music is music, you know, and uh, I mean, I like to think whenever I play guitar, it always sounds like me, but, uh, you know, since coming here to America with Long Reef, you know, recording and touring the country, with them, there's a certain style, which is definitely like a modern rock style. Uh, then doing my solo album, which uh, is just all about the guitar and, you know, me just making the kind of record that I can do whatever I want. And, uh, and now in Nashville playing with a, you know, a new country artist, Adam Craig, which is, you know, a different kind of you know, ball game as well, but uh, it's. I think I still sound like me anywhere I play. Well, you mentioned Adam Craig. That's the present. Let's go dig back a little deeper than the present. What, uh -huh. what else? What started it all? How'd you get this disease called music? All uh, right. And when, and when did you think? What, what did? What happened that you triggered something that you? Man, I'm. All this hard work is paying off. I'm beginning to make it. What? What uh -huh. happened? What happened? What's your story? Well, uh. When I was growing up, my father was, uh, he, he's a great banjo player. Ah, so, how come he's not in Nashville? I, I don't know, he should, he should yeah. be here. <laughs> but I, anyway, so I grew up listening to him play bluegrass and, and he, you know, I tried to take some lessons with the banjo but I didn't stick with it. But I always just loved music, you know, and uh, especially rock. So, uh, you know, when I was, even in my, even before, I think I was nine years old, my brother, bought me a Bon Jovi record out uh, for my birthday and you know I just since ever since then I just uh from that time I just anything I could get my hands on I was into Bob Seger uh then I got you know uh, Guns N' Roses Beach Boys and I was you know really young I just and I would you know run around the house pretending to play air guitar and get a tennis air racket guitar. and you know so when I was about 12 years old, there was a guitar lying around the house and I just, I picked it up and I was determined to make a go of it, you know, and I did. Uh, so anyway, eventually. Well, what happened after the tennis racket? You got it, <laughs> what, what was your first guitar? Uh, it was like a, this, it was my dad's, he, it was my father's guitar. He had this nylon string um, guitar just lying around the house. And uh, you know, it was really hard to play. So, but I think that made me even more de more determined. The strings were about like this far off the, so I had to squeeze really hard and, uh, you know, but uh, I, I remember the first song I learned was Let It Be from the Beatles. Ah. And, you know. That's the first song I learned on piano. 
<laughs> right. I mean, it's a, it's a, it was a cool song, you know. Yeah. And I eventually, you know, I took my, at, at school there were, you know, we had music class and so I, I grabbed the guitar and I, I played this song and my friends were like, oh wow, man, you're really good at that thing. Did you blow any windows out or anything at school? Oh no, or? not not then. I, I mean, not then. Well, not when, then. Did, when did you start blowing windows out? Well, you know, through high school, I had my bands, and we'd go in. You know, lunchtime, we'd be in the music room, like playing Metallica and Guns N' Roses and stuff. And uh, always, always, you know, in, in in as loud as we possibly could. I mean, you know, the, if there was a way to make it louder, we would find it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. And you know that was it was just really formative. I mean, we just um, we would be there every lunchtime, and we would that's all we wanted to do. And were you playing high school dances or something? Or yeah, we, we uh, played. You, you know, we played. The, the, we played. Yeah, the high school dances, and uh, actually played with the big band, which would would tour. It was my like first touring band, um, so we would go on the road, and you know, it was maybe like thirty, you know, thirty piece band with the you know wow. the horns and everything. But whenever it was, you know, you would play these songs and whenever it got to the guitar solo, you know, I would, I would turn around and make sure my amp was like turned up as loud as it could. Oh, so, loving. so everybody was hearing, you know, these great, you know, jazz kind of tunes and then it got, got to the guitar solo, it was just like, boom. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Um, wow. But I guess you asked like, when did I feel like I was making progress? Uh, when I was 19 years old, um, I was playing with a band in Sydney called Simariah, and I joined that band um, and we were playing bars around Sydney and I thought I was, you know, I thought I was really the stuff because I was doing that and, and these guys were a little older, you know, than me at the time. They were maybe in their early 20s, I was 19, so that was like, oh my god, they're so much older, but now I'm, you know, in this, I'm really in the real deal. Six months later, our manager booked a tour for us to to Europe, to the Czech Republic, where we toured with Metallica. Oh, this story's Deep, getting good. Deep Purple. Uh, we headlined festivals. Deep Purple? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. And, uh, and at that time, Steve Morse, was, the guitarist oh, Steve for Morris Deep Purple, was he, was, okay. he was a hero of mine. Yeah, yeah. So I, I just thought I was the biggest rock star on the planet, you know, in, in my mind. And it was amazing. So that's when I really, it gave me a taste of like, things can happen you know if you really if you have a dream and you just work really hard and go after it cool stuff can happen wow that's you know? true that's true so and i think coming to america that probably uh ignited that dream once again didn't it i think it, it gave me the courage to uh to make the move when, when i when i came to america in 2010 i didn't really have a plan i uh you know i i uh i didn't know that many people you know, I, I knew you, which uh -huh. is great, and here we are again, we're just, you know, catching <laughs> up again, you know, and uh, so I moved out of my apartment, I sold my car, uh, I was teaching guitar at the time, I told my guitar students, look, I'm moving to America, you know, and that's what I did. Uh -huh. And, you uh -huh. know, you put your plan into action. Right. It started from a dream, didn't it? Yeah. How long did you dream about it before you actually did it? I think I think a good you know a few years. I yeah, always wanted yeah. to come to America. Yeah, but and then once you I, got here, you thought, oh crud, that's what I was worrying about. This was a piece of cake, right? Yeah, because I mean I gotta <laughs> tell you, I love getting your road report. You, this guy mm -hmm. goes places, and he he's got a tour bus. Ah, uh, man, and, and I love getting the road report where he's been, where he's playing. Um, uh, he has a get on his blog. He, he's got a fantastic road report you can sign up for and uh, It's it's amazing. T tell us a little bit about that. I mean, I mean There's people out here listening that, that play guitar and and they dream of having a tour bus. How? how right. I mean, uh, well, you're out there hitting it hard. Yeah. Yeah. How uh, hard do you have to hit it to get a tour bus? <laughs> I mean you you gotta hit it hard. You yeah. gotta hit it hard. Yeah, that, and that's what we did. I mean, we, but, were, but it's, it's we not... were actually named uh, in 2000, uh, 2013, Long Reef was named the 10th hardest working band in America with the no, just based on the number of tour dates we were doing. And, and I had a look at that list and some of the other artists were on there. We're doing, I mean, I think we did over 200 
shows in, in 2013. Oh. Um, but some of the other artists were actually, they were based in one location doing like residencies. So if it was based on Miles in 2013, I think we'd be number one. <laughs> yeah, because we, we would, we just toured constantly. And uh, that's, you know, we, we, we built up, you know, we built up a fan base. So we have fans in, uh, we have fans in Detroit. Uh, we have fans in, in Virginia Beach. Uh, we have fans, um, a lot of fans down in like Biloxi, Mississippi. Um, we did the whole the, the whole Florida spring break thing and oh things, yeah you know, you, yeah I mean one time I this guy sometimes people will will uh, reflect him back to his blog here sometimes people will put him up you know after the show or something he woke up one morning he was on a yacht <laughs> I remember <laughs> you remember that yeah. <laughs> yeah how many days did you spend on that yacht I don't know we we was sailing there for a good you know a couple of weeks. I think it belonged to George Strait or somebody. I can't remember who, but I um, yeah, I I think and that wasn't George Strait, but it was like it was like George Strait's friend or something. It was like he he, he spent a lot of time on there, and uh, you know it was just one of those things that that you know they just really loved loved us, loved the band, and just wanted to hang out with us. And so yeah, we went all sort of you know around. So, uh, so, Gulf Coast and yeah. So you did a number of years with a few, several years with with Long Reef, and uh, and now then time travels on and you're you're on to the next big thing. Uh, yeah, you're actually out playing country music. That's right. And uh, opening up for some pretty big shows. What who all are you opening up for? Yeah. And who are you playing um, with now? Well, I, currently I'm playing with a uh, broken bow artist, Adam Craig. Adam Craig. Who I just I'm so happy to you know to land that gig. He's just well, one of he, he's one of the best songwriters uh, and singers I've I've met. And uh, he's uh, just we just connected. You know, it was one of those things that was I um, I've, I've come to Nashville. And it just it lined up, and we just met um, at a friend's place, and we're talking about what we're doing. I was I wasn't really even looking for a gig at that point, but we just you know we connected, and uh, and anyway, so yeah, we've been out on the road with with Colt Swindell, um, and uh, you know with Luke Bryan, and and just just having this wow. So Luke Bryan, so you're playing some really 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 big crowds. Yeah, Are these outdoor shows, stadium shows, or uh, these are like, yeah, they're, they're, I mean, we, we, we went out with, we went, you know, what's the biggest goal. cedar? Jeez, I, I don't know the, the exact, um, number of the, you know, the, the capacity, the crowd capacity, but I mean, I know with, with Carl, we're at least, you know, we've been playing 10, you know, 15,000 people. Oh, and you know, how's that feel? Man, how's that it, feel? It's, I mean, you play amazing. a guitar, you're not the keyboard player in the band. <laughs> you're, you're right there. You're on the, hey, you're, you're, not, right. you're playing guitar and just like right. tearing it up. And it's, it's so, uh, you know, the way the country music is. These is there a days, keyboard player in the band? I yeah, there is. To, I don't want to rocks. offend that guy. No, he get, he get, I mean, oh, they can, they can. The girls like him way more than me. He, I mean, Deep Purple rocks. had a good keyboard player. Oh, yeah, John Oh, Lord. my. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, yeah. Keyboards are cool. All <laughs> 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 well, you keyboard players out there, this is just, this is joking. <laughs> this is we're playing, you know. Um, plus, keytars. I mean, you know, the keytars. Yeah. But, uh, but anyway, so. Uh, <laughs> I've always loved country music. Um, I guess, you know, the way it's been going, I guess my particular um, style of playing and my voice fits perfectly with where country music is right now. That's great. And I've been, since in Changing. Nashville, I've been getting my, you know, I've been getting my, my telecaster, I've been playing my telecaster and getting my country weeks and really going to school on, on you know, the uh, like getting into Brent Mason, listening to Guthrie Trap and just really trying to, you know, explore, you know, that world. Uh, Nashville's really been changing since you first right. came, hasn't it? Yeah. I and mean, so my, my, my style of playing uh, when I do solos now, it's the same sound, same setup. Um, you know, I phrase like my rock blues kind of phrasing. It's like, like I would in Long Reef. Uh -huh. But it just fits now with, I mean, Adam's, you know, just such a, uh, he's got a, you know, just amazing voice and a range and, uh, and, you know, he writes, you know, he's a big fan of 90s country, but now it's blended with this modern, you know, this modern sound. So it's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's fun. Yeah. Well, listen, speaking of, of modern sounds, uh, you've got uh, 
uh, a record, a solo record that yes. you're wanting to promote. Where Which can, I'm, be, I'm where really can people? Pr really proud of it. It's uh, where can people the, find that? You can you can find that on my website, which is elnicomiller.com. E L N I C O M I L L E R. dot com, and I'm really proud of that one because uh, it was like a it was an and it, it, it's a album that I could make where I could do whatever I wanted. And, and it's, uh, it's all instrumental, but I like to think, you know, that the instrumental music I write, uh, it's not just about, you know, trying to show people, you know, at my ability as a guitarist or impress people. Uh, I like to, you know, my friends back in Australia, they tell me they put it on when I go for a surf. A yeah, surf, I have to a it, feeling I it's about some places you've been. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, um... And what about the Long Reef CDs? Uh, Long Reef CDs, yeah, there. you can find them at um, uh, longreefmusic.com and they're also on iTunes and, uh, you know, these days, of course, we're on you know, Pandora, Spotify, uh, Apple Music, of course, and, um, you know, I think, I think we'll see some more Long Reef music. Oh, sure, you know? I hope so. I hope and, so. And um, so, yeah, the, um, it's just exciting, you know, there's just, uh, I, I'm, I'm doing what I always wanted to do, just creating music, working with uh, great people. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, folks. Keep an eye on this guy, Nick Miller. He is living the dream, and uh, he's so inspiring. That's why I had him over. He's just got so many good stories. I hope you come back on the show again because, I mean, we've Love just to. barely scratched the surface here, buddy. Yeah. And come over again and again, and uh, and uh, let's tell your whole story. Man, absolutely. And right now, yeah. why don't you tell that story with your guitar? Would you do play us a couple songs off your uh, new album? Of course. Yeah. All right. Love to. Nick Miller, everybody.